what is good guys we are here with um oc round six if i recall correctly pokemon versus pearl and i wasn't smoked just the entire time but i missed the start for some reason because um i made a really like video where i put effort in with edits and i had like some issues rendering that and i still have issues so i missed this so we see Pokemon brought like some semi stall with mega stabilize and a Pheromosa. Pheromosa is still allowed in OST because it's like it's a suspect that in suspect at the moment. We see um a Mr. Stone Edge. We had 26 turn in turns in. We see um Pearl has a lone Marowak, which is probably doing a lot of work. I assume that's what killed the Tangrowth. We can rewatch the turns, I guess. Nah, I don't really want to rewatch the turns. Um this is game one, I'm pretty sure. Let me recheck. So we see um don't have yeah we have information that the surface tank was got knocked off and only showed giga drain and knock off so toxipex gets knocked this toxic skull recover probably haze in the last slot on toxipex oh it's tabu lily got toxic okay okay so we got a tabu lily on the recover nice play and now we can is this jirachi healthy he goes into sable i predicting a side shock Oof. do we know if this is choice locked Maybe aim knows this is choice lock. I actually don't know that because I haven't seen the entire game, but I'm pretty sure it's choice lock the way aim is playing this. Aim goes for knockoff, gets rid of the Merrick. That was that was a huge play, good god. He out Oh my god, that was a lord. What? Wait, what what did he he has to HBIs here? The landers is so obvious. Did he go for HBIs? No. That was so obvious, dude. Oh, he's SD, my bad, my bad, guys. I haven't seen his set. He's SD, Continental Crush with Rocks. Did he predict aim to bring something like this? Because that's usually a team you bring if you expect the opponent to have that. That must be the pressure of battling po Joey Pokey. <laughs> he said, what are you doing, Paul? Question, my question. I mean, this is, like, kind of hard for me to say if he misplayed because I haven't seen the thing from the beginning of the game. And I didn't know what his wing gun is. But I know that the Merrick was important. So he had choice like Lele. Dang. So yeah, he's this is like a team I would use. Semi stall ish. So like sometimes I would bring this if I feel like it. So we see Wish checked U turn, probably Iron Head in the last slot of Fire Punch. Is he weak to Mega Scissor? He has a Toxic Pack, so that um uh, that's probably enough to check Scissor. His Psychic, wow. He did not see that one. Yeah, last time I recorded like the replays, right? I recorded the replays of last series um aim OST. Wanted to catch this live this time. I mean, since Aim is bringing some fat team, I guess it's fine that I didn't record the entire thing because this is probably already going on for like a while. I think this is game one. Let me scroll up. Yeah, this is game one. So this is still best of three. I think in the later rounds of OST, at least this is how it was last year. It's going to be like best of five in the later rounds. Is it? He's helmet lander, right? Yeah. Gets the scissor chip there. So the scissors are like 55 after rocks. Guninja takes rocks and burn here. Okay, the wish in the air. I forgot about that. So his land is still healthy. He can go Toxapex. Um, this might have extra sensory. No, it's it's Ash Ninja. Wait, it's Scarf? Oh, it's Protein. It's Scarf Protein. I just thought it was Ash Ninja for some reason because I saw U turn and Ice Beam. But yeah, Gunk Shot. Only Protein Guninja learns Gunk Shot. So it's obviously Protein. Choice Scarf was knocked off, so the, the last move could be Rock Slide, because he's kind of weak to Zard Y. I don't know. It could also be um, a Water move. Or it could be Spikes. Oh, yeah, I've seen Spikes on Scarf Grin. So Aim's just going for the burn here. I mean, what does Paul even have for this Toxapex? Besides Lele, Toxapex walls his entire team. And he can really bring Lele in on this, because Lele is... um. Poisoned will take rock, so it's pretty much dead if it can't switch into a scald. Yeah. I don't see Pearl winning this one. Let 
that Toxabex showing why it's broken. Like I'm kind of joking here. Like I don't really think Toxabex is broken, but it just walls a lot of the meta. It's, it's really disgusting. I mean, he, he has Stone Edge and oh, he's SD Helmet. Oh, I saw him bring this last round. I think he brought this last round versus I thought CL. That did so much, yeah. So Pulse is us basically dead. Like Pulse's entire team is just getting chipped. But rocks and everything's like burned or poisoned, almost everything. Okay, Aim decides to basically sack off his Sableye. Since this is gonna die, like it cannot come into rocks again. Aim has no highlight control. Actually, he has potentially rapid spin on Fermosa, but there's no point in saving his Sableye. He's just gonna he's just gonna get switch advantage by sacking the Sableye off. Like Aim is in the disadvantage mons wise, but Paul cannot really afford to switch out here in case this is Quiverdance. Because Quiverdance for Mosa just wins. I mean, it doesn't even have to be Quiverdance. Scar for Mosa kind of wins too. Yeah, Scar for Mosa just wins. Like, he can sack the Landris so it doesn't get a beast boost, I guess. Dude, Scar for Mosa just wins with spamming U turn or high jump kick. Like, I guess he forces himself to bullet punch, but like, Aim can just go out and. Toxapex and Scissor dies to rocks after. I guess he can he can ruse predicting aim to switch. Like I don't think aim is staying in here. Yeah, I'm kinda fine with this that I didn't record the oh he switch wow he stayed in. So now he just wins with this. <laughs> That's the beast boost. <laughs> Does he have HP investment on his Fermosa? Or is it maybe just not attacked non-attack invested Scizor? Wait, Greninja does not speed this. Yeah, Aim just wins with Fermosa, okay. Okay, okay, Paul forfeits. I guess we can we can maybe rewatch some of the turns so we know what happened, but that's probably gonna be like two minutes until game two starts. So you light up with Lele, uh, Aim just protects. And he's gonna go for Moonblast. And Aim is gonna go Jirachi here. And I assume he can double into Landers or Merrick. That's a good play. Game two already started, so I guess we're we're not gonna watch game one. <laughs> okay, Aim brought like Volcarona with um that could be Defox, Zapdos or Scizor. I um, mean, Obi's team, we see um, Zapdos with 3 attacks Roost and a Defog Scizor. Which, uh, 3 attacks Zapdos is really good, but he'd have HP and some T Bolt or th Discharge and Roost. But I kind of like Zapdos as a Defogger because it has pressure, so you can Defog on most Rockers. On Defensive Land, you can Defog all day. They don't run Stone Edge most of the time. I mean, Ames had Stone Edge SD last game, but most of the time they don't run it. Okay, we see Paul bring bulky offense. Mega Scissor again. We have Mega Scissor on both sides. Uh, Volcarona looking like a huge, huge threat, but that's nothing new. The Scarf has either the Keldeo or the Latios. Um, this could be Gigavolt Latios. But Tapu Fini lifts it from full. I think Aim can go into Guard Jump here, scouting for. Okay, Jirachi. I feel like going Garchomp would have been okay there. Now Garchomp would have taken a lot from Psychic. I don't know why he's Psychic though. Maybe no, maybe knowing Aim would scout for Gigavolt. This could also be HP Fire to hit Scizors. Like some Lulati with Gigavolt, HP Fire, Roost, Psychic. Um, if it's not Defog Lati, it has to be Defog Scizor because he has a Merrick which is weak to rocks. And in general rocks are always annoying. But yeah, um, Paul obviously wants to get rocks up. Let me actually fix the dimensions real quick. Because the chat, no one is talking in the chat, so we don't have to record this, uh, the lobby chat. But what was I trying to say? Well, Aim just grabs all the momentum there. He brought Spadef Jirachi again. Volcarona is in, and this basically gets a huge... Like, I don't want to say kill, because it could be Spadef Marek, but... 
Now, most Morlocks are offensive, especially because it's like a stall breaker. Uh, going Hot Kelly is a good play. I guess that was his only play, because if he went for Quiver Dance there and he went into Merrick, Merrick just probably died to... If it's the Hurricane, Merrick just died. Also, HP Ground might just kill Merrick if it's offensive. But yeah, I don't think it's the Hurricane. This team is probably just Inferno Overdrive. And this Kelly is probably Stone Age Scarf to check for Corona, but... Yeah, he can fire off a Hydro Pump, but the Fiend just takes no damage from that. But Leftovers is like... Torres to switch out, Fini's gonna get leftovers again. He basically did no damage to the Fini. And we see it's probably. It could be a Solvest or AV McGurn, I'm not sure about the damage there. 15% seems like a lot of damage. I don't think it's a Salt Vest. Could be Trick Room, could be. I don't know, dude. It's obviously Rocks Land on Pearl's team. And our aim steam is obviously, um, actually, yeah, it probably rocks Tirachi, but it could be the Wish Protect U turn Iron Hand and Rocks on Garchomp. Yeah, we see it's T Bolt, so it could be, yeah, it's Rocks Tirachi, okay. So I, I think it has um, Healing Wish to support Volcarona, or it could have Wish, but I don't think it has Protect. And probably Iron Hand then. Aim gets up Rocks, so. He's probably going to U-turn or double switch. I think double switching is good, predicting the Landris. If you don't have Icy Wind on this, which I don't think he has space for, um, you can double into something that pressures the Landris. Um, if you have a Water Move on Fini, you can double into Fini. You can double into Zapdos if you have HP Eyes. Like, I don't think Paul is staying in here. Because he kind of has to get like his own rocks up to pressure aim the Defog. Yeah, it's looking really good for aim. Hope my voice is getting picked up fine. Because this recording program has shown in the past that it's like... That my voice is like really low sometimes. Oh yeah, I actually wanted to check Skype if I can get someone to join. Let me see on my phone first. I mean, nah, I'm recording this alone. It's almost... It's looking to be like a kind of fast series. I assume the last game probably took like 20-30 minutes if I recorded the entire thing, if I would have recorded the entire thing. Now, they were playing kind of fast to be honest, at least at the last turns that I saw. Yeah, he goes Landers. Do we see the double or do we see a U-turn? Yeah, I thought that was so obvious. And he could have doubled to not take helmet damage, but it's not even helmet Landers, so he doesn't even take helmet. So yeah, U-turn was obviously a good play, but the reason I saw you could double is because like, you just don't want to this um, You just don't want to take helmet damage, but I guess it's not helmet Lander. Damn, he has Hydro Pump. Like, the only. Yeah, that's what I'm, I was about to say. He probably has a water move if he brings out the Fini in the Lando. But I didn't think it would be Hydro Pump. I thought it would be Surf or Scald. He's gonna Mega Evolve his Scissor here. Yeah, it would be interesting to see if this um, Magina has HP Fire. I would I would predict um, Pearl to have HP Fire on Larios if it's not a Magina. Like, I don't know. Merrick alone to beat Scissor is a bit is not that much because Merrick gets worn down from rocks. Like I assume Paul has to have something else to beat Scissor. Uh Kelly is not the reliable Scissor answer. So yeah, I'm just got this Volcarona in with a huge turn. Got a scissor in instead of roosting, he just U-turns to keep up offensive momentum. So scissor is like 65, which is still kind of healthy. Uh U-turn out on the opposing scissor. And bop that with a fire blast. Yeah, the thing is, I was like checking the entire time if Pearl is online, and like I didn't see Pearl's name here. That's also why I missed it. But he's playing on an old Superstar Pearl, so yeah, that's my mistake. Um, do we see Z? Ooh, Z Shadow Side just blows Merrick back. That set is so good. It could be HPIs. Uh, I don't know. I think Aim talked about the set. I don't know if it was Aim, but yeah, we thought I thought used an SPL too. The uh, Fire Blast, Z Shadow Psych set with uh, HP Eyes. I don't know if they actually use Z Shadow Psych in this build, but besides the game where TDK used it, um, well, I owe you a well you used it, and I don't know if you just went for regular Psychic. So, do we see. Ooh. If this is not Scarf, Larry, this. Well, Corona is getting. Ooh, okay, it's just a Fire Blast. It's not Scarf Lottie, which makes sense because I assume it's Scarf Kelly. Scarf Kelly is like the one of the best Greninja checks. 
Like that's the only good kill you feel like, cause you can switch in your Greninja and scare it out if you scarf. If you not scarf, you're just gonna get two hit killed by like gunk shot into extra sensory or hydro pump into extra sensory. If it has gunk, if it has extra sensory, not every Greninja runs that obviously. So um, Pokemon just wins this like. He brings in the Fini, Latios can't do anything to it, it's, oh, I guess it's not, it's not kickable then. So it's probably Z, it's probably Z with Megiana, which makes a lot of sense to me the way he has shown t bolt on his Megiana. Probably Z Electri Electrium, or however that thing is called. Um, yeah, it could also be Z Flurkin, I don't know. But Z Electrium is like, kinda good to get rid of Toxapex, and Pearl's team is kinda weak to Toxapex besides Ladi. Seeker started absolutely nothing, and Moonblast picks off the Keldeo. He can even go for two Moonblasts here if he doesn't want to miss a risk missing a Hydro Pump. But I guess he can just go for Hydro Pump, because if he misses one, he still has a second chance to hit. And I don't think Moonblast kills this. So it's like the same thing if he goes for two pumps and hits one. It's the same thing then like two hit KO. As if he would two hit KO with Moonblast. I'm sorry if my narration is a bit off. Um... Yeah, he just decides to Moonblast twice. I guess it's the safest play, but he has to... Like, he's not gonna kill his landers this way, so he can switch out into Zapdos here. But, like, Paul is kinda... Paul is kinda forced to Earthquake, so yeah, Aim plays it safe. Like, Aim has no reason to switch out. Like, Aim can just win this by playing safe, but like, he could've switched out into Zapdos to preserve a higher score, but there's not really a point. I guess he stayed in in case uh, Pearl wants to overpredict. This could be, uh, yeah, that's a Z move. Is it a Z electric? A Z focus blast? A, a Z, Z aura sphere? I don't know, but that did nothing, dude. How did Scissor eat that? He said grads, GG's. Oh, did he misspell? Maybe that doesn't mean grads. I don't know, but Aim just completely dominated the series. I mean, the first game was. I think the. F Aim. Pearl could have won the first. Oh, he's asking if it's Defog Fini. Or if it had like... Taunt maybe? I don't know what bird means. Oh, Defog Bird! Defog Bird, you meant the Zapdos. As <laughs> Steam Teaser says it's... Defog Scissor. I don't know, I like Defog Zapdos with pressure. Because it has, like, Starfog has less PP than Devo could pressure. Okay, yeah, it was Devo's scissor, okay. So the Zapdos was probably three attacks of Roos. It could have also been an offensive Zapdos, but defensive makes a lot of sense. Uh, I like this team aim broad. We can go over the first game. Okay, my computer's about to die. Let me pause real quick. So Paul said he should have won more games like this in SBL and Aim said you know how my games went down in SBL. I'm just messing around. I said Paul cursed me. I won't sub him even though I like him. <laughs> what the fuck? Did he mean uh, what? Um, I don't know if you guys are interested in going over game 1 because it was like... I guess we can skip through it real fast. Cause it was like, it was only 53, 53 turns, but yeah, aim with a dominant, dominant performance, wins the series 2-0. We were at like, okay, okay, so you turn on the Merrick and he got in his Landris, and I think he gets up his rocks. His pulse stays in predicting, actually never mind, so he brought in the Landris on the Merrick, he didn't bring it in on a free switch. Okay, okay, he goes into Tangros. This is SD, so he's gonna scout for. Um, never mind, I thought he would go. Yeah, just HPIs. I thought Continental Crush might kill us at plus two, so this is why I thought Aim could switch. Did it, does this just kill? Yeah, this just kills. Um, like, I might have thought about going Jirachi on a Continental Crush, but I guess having Jirachi healthy is nice for Tapu Lele. And just getting damage off with HPIs on Lander is important. So, the Farmosa, I think this could have been Specs Farmosa, because, yeah, the Scissor took 39%, I'm pretty sure that's Specs Farmosa. He just rushed it off, he's gonna U-turn out here on the Toxapax. I'm sorry if you guys don't like this, like, because it's fat, but... This is rather fast, because we're, like, skipping to... 
We're skipping through this pretty fast. So yeah, he got in the Lele. Um, he got the Lele toxic on this on this turn that Lele came, and that was that was usually game deciding because Lele could have been a huge huge threat, and like I think he knew the Lele was um, choice locked. Um, the way Paul is playing the Lele, I think Aim just knew. And he went Scissor, uh, Sableye predicting a Psy Shock or HP Fire. Because he has a Jirachi in the back, so... Like, Pearl knows that Aim is not staying in, so he won't Psychic there. Okay, so he got the Scissor, the Greninja knocked off. Uh, keeping the Scarf on the Greninja would have been nice for the Furmosa. Other than that, he doesn't need the Scarf, he just wants to switch a move. So I guess he's going for Poison and for... Freezes. And okay, this is how we got it burned. So yeah, since it's not life up Greninja, that can't beat the Sableye at all. Even life up Greninja actually kind of loses to Sableye. Okay, you got the poison there. Even life up Greninja kind of loses to Sableye because it can... If it gets knocked off, um, Hydro Pump doesn't do that much anymore. But yeah, Aim is doing really well and OST. He's definitely one of the favorites, but... We still have some other... Some other threats in there. Talked about talked a bit about it in the last video that I made with uh, about OST round five aims games. So yeah, you guys can just watch. Like there's no really point in narrating this. You guys see, um, Pearl's only real good wall breaker is the Marowak, which um, I think we saw he let it let it get knocked off later on. And yeah, like I said, the Lily being choice. Wait, I guess it's Specs Lily maybe. Oh, I didn't pay attention. Nah, I think we, we saw we saw if it was Scarf or Specs, because I think the Lily got knocked. Did it? 42%. If that's Max with F. Jirachi, that could be Specs Lily. Yeah, I think it could be Specs Lily. Because, like, Scarf Greninja plus Scarf Lily doesn't make any sense. You need some breaking power. I think Specs Lily makes sense. Okay, you got the Landers in on the Earthquake, so it gets up his rocks. Dodge the Stonage, so. We see a little bit of Hex against Aim, but nothing too crazy. At least not... He didn't get hexed like an SPL. If the Lele was Twisted Spoon... Nah, nah, nah. Aim had the Jirachi. The Jirachi... Spadef Jirachi was just... Spadef Jirachi was huge in this matchup. Being able to check the Lele pretty much. And the Marowak, like... Also getting, yeah, like I said, getting toxic on the Lele was huge. The Marek, uh, I, I forgot how he got the Marek get knocked off. Yeah, this was fire bringing the Sableye in the side shock. Yeah, we, we saw it, we saw it from this point. And then he just went hard and he, he knocked off here. Knowing the Lele is choice locked and it can't touch the Sableye. I don't know if he predicted him to go Marek. Um, I assume Pearl predicted um, aim to go for recover slash risp. And he tried to bring Merrick in. I think that was that was a huge turn, but I don't think it was game deciding. I feel like Aim pretty much had this game locked up no matter what. So yeah, congratulations to uh, Pokey Aim. I like the the team room game too a lot more. The the game one seems interesting though. It's like semi stall and then there's a Fermosa, but a Specs Fermosa, which you don't really which you wouldn't really expect. You would maybe expect the scar for Mosa since Ames team is kind of slow, but I guess he has a defensive core to like kind of chill back on, sit down and relax. Yeah. Okay. Let me think about the psychic could be. This could be for equivalence for Mosa so you don't get set up on. Because I'm pretty sure that no, nah, you could just run a physical move. What is Psychic for? Let me think about what Psychic hits. I'm actually not sure. I guess it's for Toxapex? Yeah, I guess it's for Toxapex to hit that. That makes some sense. Other than that, I'm not really sure what it hits. And does matter. Yeah, we can just skip, skip through. And this is Toxapex, it just walls everything here. Gets an SD up, so the scissor is not too too threatening. Earthquake here is gonna do a lot. And they probably could have sacked his own landers there, but like it would have died to rocks, but I don't think it would have made a difference. Like Aim just goes pecs again. Oh Sable Sex Sable, yeah, I don't I forgot. 
Brings in a specs for Moza and just cleans with Buck Bus, surprisingly leaving that bullet punch. I guess it was really defensive scissor, we already talked about it. And Buck Bus picks everything off, pull forfeits. This is game one, we already saw that. I don't know why I went over it again, I guess because we missed the beginning. Thank you guys for watching. Um, this SPL finals this weekend, I don't know when the. I don't know, I think most games are going to be tomorrow on, on Sunday. So stay tuned for that. And my show on live that I recorded today, I have some rendering issues that will probably be coming. I guess it's a Hida Fajita type of series. Shoutouts to Padlop. I decided to name it Hot and Spicy Meat, but I don't know. I feel like that's kind of stolen, that name, because like Thomas has an alt like this and he kind of uses that word sometimes. I'm not sure. But I don't think there's a series like that named like that. And the episode today was fun. Um, brought a lot of different teams, even though Padlop decided to bring some tryhard shit. Like, that wasn't really Hida Fajita, in my opinion, the Padlop teams, but we had some other really, really fun teams, so stay tuned for that. Um, did I have anything else to say? Oh yeah, OST, OST. Um, NJMP is playing this round, Poik is playing... Uh, NJMP is playing versus... I think versus Pokemon's friend, I forgot his name, is it Moet? He still knows T round 6, which is pretty impressive, because... Uh, I don't know, when you see him play in Ames Live, you wouldn't think he's that good. I mean, I'm not, I don't want to shit talk him, I uh, hope you don't understand. <laughs> don't understand, don't get me wrong, people. Uh, also, congratulations to user Easy. He is still an OST. You think he won versus Sable Mama Bay. Sable Mama Bay hexed out Ricardo in last round, which was uh, pretty, pretty... Uh, Painful to watch. I liked Ricardo's teams a lot as he was bringing and he, I don't know, like he just played well too. I feel like he was one of the favorites to win OST. Like he beat Nintendi last year's finalist. And he beat Poges. But yeah, that's that's Pokemon for you. He got hexed out. And easy avenged him, I guess. He won versus Seven Ma Bay. I don't know, I don't really have anything else to say, I don't know why I'm rambling for so long. Thank you guys for watching and I'm out.